Welcome, welcome. So we are going to work on month one of Legit Kits Iris. And I made this once before. I am going to make it again. It's a little bit bigger than what I want for the space. So I have reduced my, I made a copy of the pattern and reduced it 75%. So I'm going to be, that's why this is a little smaller than what you would get if you order and get the, the full kit. If you are interested, legitbomb.com, discount code of Boozy Iris. That is where you're going to be able to get your own copy of what we're working on here today. So when you get the first kit, it is going to come. This is what the first month is going to look like. It's going to be four blocks like this. <laughs> It will come with all of the fabrics that you need. Um, it, this is a, there's only one in this where there's two subunits for a block and that kind of breaks it down that way. And then this is the cutting guide of how to make the best use of your fabrics. And then there is a quick generic user guide on how to do foundation paper piecing if you have never done foundation paper piecing before. I also have a video that's tagged um, at the top of my TikTok account and it is also posted over on my YouTube account. Same name. If you are interested in any of the tools that I'm using, um, on my link tree there is an Amazon link. Everything that I use is listed there. This is what it's going to look like when it is all said and done. It's a big eyeball. It is really, really cool. So um, let's get to work. We're going to do these four blocks today. This one is in two pieces. So I'm going to start with A1. And there are only two pieces to this one. Got my paper scissors. I'm going to kind of trim this down a little bit. If this was a full size, it would, if this was the, the original pattern, it would take up the entire page. But I'm doing this at three quarter size because that's when it, what's going to work better for my plate, for my, where I want to put it. So I'm going to find SG, find a piece of fabric that's big enough. I've done so many legit kits over the years, or, well, it's been a year and a half or so, but I've got scraps and scraps and scraps. So that is what all of this is, is scraps and scraps and scraps. I'm going to use my ruler here, trim this down. And this, you can see that's where my sewing line is actually going to be. Trim this down. And then we need YE for the other half of it. Welcome in. It is a translucent cutting mat on top of an LED light board. Yes. Um, it is on my Amazon list, quilting list. But yeah, it is two separate pieces. It is two separate pieces. Um, this is just an inexpensive one off Amazon. There are some name brand ones out there. Um, this and this were all where they were both around 35 bucks or so a piece. They were less than 50 bucks a piece. All right. Very, very similar colors. So I want to keep track. 
This was piece number two. This was piece number one. I'm going to flip that over. I will set that on there. And I'm going to put a pin in here just to hold it still. Way away from this sewing line over here. And then this one goes on here like that. We'll flip it over. And then a couple pins in there just to hold it still so it doesn't move while I go to the machine over here. I am going to reduce my stitch length. The default on my machine is a stitch length of 2.4. I'm dropping it down to 1.9. What that's going to do is that's going to perforate more so that when I go to remove this, it's going to rip off easier. So then we're going to flip this over and I'm going to stitch right on that line there. go and I'm going to take this over and press and I forgot to turn my iron on so give me a second while I plug that in and give it a chance to warm up so I'll take a minute for that to warm up and then we're just going to press this over and then we'll trim it down now when you go to trim down this line here is your sewing line your, this is your seam allowance here. This is not right now a full quarter inch because like I said, I did reduce my pattern down 75%. So I will just use my add a quarter, lay it right on that line and trim it. And that was, then I'll still get my quarter inch, even though, why did my lights just turn off? Anyways, did I not turn my lights on over there? Could have swore I turned them on. No, nope, guess I had. They did just turn off. Okay. Well, seeing how they're plugged into the same outlet that my iron is plugged into, that is concerning. Either either my uh, my surge protector is going. Or I have gremlins. I don't like either option. Oh, what? Well, thank you, Diane. Thank you, thank you. Yes, please. Share that information. All right, like I said, I'm cutting quarter inch seam. Putting my ruler right on that sew line and adding the quarter inch in. This is three quarters of the size of what the what you would get when you buy the full kit. Legit Kits has some really awesome patterns. I've made several of them if you look back through all my videos. So there's block one. Barely looks like anything. We're going to set that aside. And now we will grab block two. And we are going to use YE again. And not quite big enough. Not quite big enough. some of the creases out of this one. Okay, 
I'm gonna go right about like that. I like to leave my stickers on as long as humanly possible because some of these colors are so darn close to one another that, uh, yeah. You have a quilt shop and people would love it. Awesome! That's wonderful. We're, thank you for sharing. Where is your quilt shop? What part of the world are you in? Mississippi, awesome! I just sent them all because we have a sew class this morning. Awesome! Thank you! Thank you. Hey, um, now Legit Kits, um, they are going to be, they're going to have their product available on Checkers. So check them out there and let them know that I sent you. Um, I'm working on a discount code. I've just, I, I, I keep, I keep dropping the ball. So... Let them know that, that Amy sent you. And you can carry some of these products in your store. So wouldn't that be awesome? All right. So now, here we go. We're going to lay this on here. And again, I'm just going to put a pin on in here just to hold it still. And then this piece is going to go down here. Flip that over. Couple pins in here to hold it still. And then we're going to stitch right on that line again. Welcome in, friends. Welcome, welcome. All right. Now we'll press this open. Give me a second. Now, if you have any questions and you want to see a replay of what I'm doing, first off, ask. And I will try to show again, explain different, whatever. But I am also going to be downloading this and putting it over on my tube of you. You know what I mean? The place with all the videos. It'll be over there so you can refer back to it. We're going to trim this again. Remember that this line here between the, the V... And the, the gray matter, that is your sewing line. The gray is your seam line. For me right now, today, that seam line looks a little shy because I reduced this whole pattern to 75% so that it will fit in, my, in the area I want it to a little better. All right, so now we've got two blocks done. So again, we are working in this area right up here. We've got these two blocks done right now. Now we're going to work on these two. Now here, I've used just a very neutral thread. Just It's actually, I think, I would call it natural. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very light beige. This one, I'll use the same. But when I get into this darker... What I did before is I actually put like a teal thread on because it seemed to blend with most everything. Um, Tone-wise, it was about right. The thing you don't want is when you press that seam open, you may, especially when you get to a point where you have lots of, of seams coming together, you may end up seeing some of that thread and you don't want it to be 
glaringly different in value. Sometimes it will be because you're going to put a very dark with a very light right next to each other. So you, but if you can find something that's going to be kind of that neutralish color, then then that's that's all for the better. So for here, this this is the one piece that we're going to have that's going to be two separate pieces. This is all light color. It just happens to be this is all light colors and this is the darker colors. So I will do. That's where I'm going to change my thread. This basically we've got this part of the block and that part of the block. Right here. Let's see. The seam. The seam goes like this across there. So this part is all lighter colors. And this one has a fair amount of darker colors. And I'm going to switch over to my, my teal thread at that point. So we'll start with this one while we still have the light thread on the machine. And yes, I do have a garbage can stuck in there. I'm not just tossing stuff on the floor. Although it's very tempting sometimes. All right. SG. Give me this one here. glass. That works just about perfectly right there. Where'd my ruler go? I hid it from myself. Welcome in friends. Welcome, welcome. And then I want V. I like to be frugal with my pieces and my fabric. That's where my light box comes in real handy because I can look at that. Here we are. This goes right here. That one is going to go there, so we'll flip it over. Welcome in, friends. Welcome, welcome. We are working on the newest legit kits. Block of the month. Legit. Oh, 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 I covered up my paper here. Legitbomb.com. You have until the until next Sunday to sign up, and you have until the 26th. This is what you're going to look like when we're all done. This first month, we are working on this little bit of it right here. So we're going to start out real easy. This whole project is relatively easy. It's still considered an easy pattern. There's a fair amount of small pieces once we get going, but it's it's not uh, it's not too difficult. I have reduced the pattern down to 75% to fit the space that I want it to fit in. All right. So now I'm going to go press this. There we go. Now we're going to put piece three on. Now, to trim this down, we're going to first 
pop the paper, pop the seam through the paper here at that intersection. Now I'm going to take a piece of something stiff. I've got a piece of cardstock. It's this is a, a postcard type pattern. I'm going to lay it right on my seam line. I'm going to fold this over. And then I'm going to use my add a quarter ruler and lay that right there. And that's that little lip on the back side of it is going to keep it from going too far. It's going to keep it right there. It'll slide this way, it'll slide that way, but it won't go any further that way because of that lip. And I'm going to trim that off. And now I'm going to find color KY which is prairie sky. Let's see if I've got a small piece of this. It's going to be in that ballpark size. And you can use the fabrics that come with the full kit, or you can substitute in fabrics of your own. Nothing says you have to use. The kits come with Kona Cottons. Very ample supply. I had a lot left over when I was done. I did the whole kit, sampled it, and I because they, they give you enough that you need for each month, well, you may have a little bit extra this month and a little bit extra and a little bit. You end up with quite a bit of extra. All right, so that piece is going to fit in there. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it over. I'll throw a couple pins in to hold it down. Cats and bats, welcome in. Welcome friends. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Throw some likes on there, throw some comments on there. That helps the algorithm know that somebody's here and wants to hear more. All right, now, I did push that a little shy, but it's gonna be within the seam allowance, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll take, I'll be, I'll, I'll accept that shortcoming. It's a little bit shy of what of my full quarter inch, but it's within the seam allowance, so I'm okay with that. You may not be okay with that. I'm okay with that. Everybody has their own little tolerance of what's going to happen. As far as I'm concerned, it's it's not even close to the to the seam line, so it's going to be okay. Now again, I just get two seams that cross this next seam. Good morning. So I just popped the, the paper through the stitching, loosened it up. Now I'm going to take my stiff card, lay it on that next sewing line, fold it over, and trim off the excess. excess. This is obviously garbage. This one could potentially get used again, but I'm okay with throwing it away today. Now I'm gonna, I need a piece for here, and you know what, that's just about the right length, except that there is a huge piece of selvage here. What else do I have in here? That'll work right there. Doesn't have to be exactly the right size, just has to cover the area. Now, some people would have just taken that thing, sewn it on there, and then cut it afterwards. I don't, I personally don't like to have all that excess float up and around. It bothers me, but that's just me. So that's going to fit there. And we're going to flip this over. 
I'm going to toss a couple pins in here just to hold it still so that it doesn't wiggle while I go over to the sewing machine. Again, making sure that these are well away from my stitch line that's going to be here. Because I'm going to sew like this. I'm not going to see where those pins are. Now we're going to trim this down. And remember, I reduce the pattern size. So my, normally you're going to put that, you're going to cut right along the edge of that gray. But because I reduced my pattern size, my seam allowance is actually three quarters of the size it should be. So I'm just, I'm still cutting at a quarter inch. See what I meant about, I pushed it a little too far, but it's still going to be covered in the seam line, so I'm okay with that. All right, now we're going to build this part here, and that is some of the darker colors, so I'm going to switch over to my darker thread. And I will probably leave that darker thread on until, well, let's see, next month there's going to be part that we'll do with lighter thread. Because next month will be these four. So this part will switch it back over to the lighter thread. But for the most part, this is all going to be done with the darker thread. In here I'll change over. Down here I'll change over. All right, re-thread my machine here. Hey, Courtney. Made it to the first stop before the last stop. Okay. What did I miss, Courtney? What am I missing? Welcome in anyways. Welcome, welcome. Ah. Uh, I need to wind a bobbin too because I'm not prepared. Yeah, I did this on a live once before, and apparently, lives are only saved for 30 days now. And I did this about 35 days ago, so if this is looking kind of like deja vu, it is. Legitbomb.com if you want this pattern. You will end up with something that looks like this after 12 months. You use the, the discount code Boozy Iris, you're going to get 10% off your first month and you're going to help support your local creator. you welcome in thank you for the likes guys all right we're re-threaded now doesn't take long to do that once you've done it a hundred thousand times all righty so now we are going to work on this part of it so we're going to start out with cyan see why I need just a little tiny piece. Is that going to be big enough? Yeah, that's big enough. And 
WWFs. This one. All right. So we're going to put this on there. How did I just say that was going to fit like that? That's what we got the light, the light box for, right, guys? And that's going to go on there like that. Now, I tend to, when I put these pins in, I go perpendicular to the seam line. Because if I put them this way, I'm either going to push them out or shove them in, depending on which way, the, which way I'm going with the, the sewing machine. Just my personal experience. Welcome in, friends. All right, let's get rid of those. Let me go press this. tear back this paper a little bit and right on that seam line fold over and trim now I'm going with GL which is glacier I just need a tiny little piece of this so what do I got in here for a Got a tail here I'm going to grab. That would be more than enough. I'll lay that on there. This one is small enough. I'm just going to hold on to it. Now, I do use a lot of steam when I'm pressing my seams. Now, the other thing I'm going to tell you with all of these points coming together like that, I'm going to cut that seam allowance down just a little bit. I just did a little cut into there. And when I trim up, all the excess will come off. Just kind of reduces some of that bulk. I also am a big proponent of using steam, especially when we have all these beats, all these seams coming together at a point like that. That's going to help things lay down a little better. And then we've got JG coming up next, which is Jade Green. Just eyeballing a piece here. That'll fit on there. Sometimes that's the best way, just to eyeball it. Lay that on there. Mm 
Welcome in, friends. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to get, get rid of a little bit of the bulk there. Trim this up. One more piece on this. Need some more of that prairie sky. you do these the more you'll be able to kind of eyeball biggest thing I can tell you to make sure you're covered out here is that for this point over here this right here this is the uh, seam line right there I want to make sure that my fabric goes over and covers that if I'm if I got a parallel line or perpendicular line here if I were to put this on here, down here like this, it's not going to cover. But if I put this on there like that, that's going to cover. Don't know if you guys could see that, what I was talking about. That's my friendly tip of the day. I got my information cover up there. Trim this one down. Oops, put that on the right line, Amy. I was gonna give myself a quarter inch outside the seam long seam allowance. So now these two are going to hook together. And the best thing I'm going to say is we're going to match up all the important bits. This and this, these seam lines, these where these intersections come together. Those sets of intersections need to match up. Stick our pin through right there at that intersection. And then we're going to stick it through right at that intersection. Put them together so that pin is perpendicular, 90 degrees. Now, if I stick a pin right in through this intersection, it should poke out at that intersection if I've done everything right. Not exactly, but we're going to adjust. Just means we're spun a little bit. So 
So we're going in there and we're coming out there. And same thing down here. We're going in at that point. We're going in there and we're coming out there. Okay, now I've got all three of my pins straight in. Now I'm going to put pins in like this. And if I don't grab that paper on the back side, that's just as well, as long as I've got the fabric, because that's going to keep everything nice and flat. Keep things from getting too dis too warped. Use the thinnest pins, the finest pins that you have. There. These are some. These are not expensive pins. These are clover pins. They're long. They're almost two inches long, I believe. Yeah, these are like the inch and seven eighths or something like that. So there we are. We are nice and flat. This is perfect. If there aren't big warps and it's good. Now I'm going to stitch right on that line. I'm going to take the pins out as I get to them. go right on the line there right on that line there perfect now I'm going to remove the paper from my seam allowance before I press because otherwise you never want to get it out and it just it get rid of that bulk if you don't need that bulk in there don't take that bulk don't put that bulk in there There we go. So now I'm going to go press this. I'm going to press it open. We've got all those big seams there. I'm just going to press it open. Lots of steam. Helps things stay where they go where you want them. And there we go. One more, one more uh, block and we will be done with this month's stuff, okay? And this one is all one piece. It's five pieces, but it's... No subunits like that one had. All right. We are going to start out with KY. I got everything covered. Lay that down where I want it. And then I'm going to carefully pull that tablecloth out from underneath the table. Remember, I'm not under, uh, underneath the place settings. Gee. 
Yeah, this one's about the right size. This one is going to go here, and we'll just flip that over. Hello, friends. Hello, hello, hello. So, who's in here? Tap me a purple heart if you are a quilter tap me a blue heart if you have done a legit kit before and tap me a green heart if you want to do a legit kit well thank you for the likes Thank you, Showin. Sh Showin. Sharon Bowen. Showin. I just named you Showin. Thank you, Sharon. All right. Let me go press this. Thank you for the likes. Thank you guys for all the likes. All right. Well, boogers. Now I'm looking at going, oh, that's okay. But you know what? It, it's putting my salvage. <laughs> Super for time. I want to shove this whole thing that way. Welcome in, friends. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Watch me unstitch because I did not put my fabric in the right place, which is going to put a whole bunch of selvage in the finished area. So I am unsewing. All right, so what would we say? We need to shove the whole thing this way, about as far as we can go. All right. All 
Let's stitch this again. connection. Gur, 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 gur. Okay, let's see. All right, we're going to option two. We'll just be a little delayed. Okay, unsewing is your least favorite part of quilting. Yes, I totally agree. Totally agree with that, Sharon. Shannon, I'm giving you all sorts of new names today. <laughs> yes, that could slow us down. All right, let me see if I can reconnect on my phone. There, I'm back, back to what I want. <laughs> Sorry about that, girlfriend. Sorry about that. All right, I'm back. I'm back to what I want. Dang it. Urgh, tech technology. Technology. Do I sound like an old lady now? Okay, so now I've got everything covered. I've still got a little bit of that salvage in there, but I'm, I'm okay with it. By the time you get the quilting done, I probably won't know where it's at, let alone anybody else. All right. It's just, you know how, with Kona's, you don't have to worry about the white. It's not the worst you've been called. <laughs> You don't have to worry about the white seam, the salvage, but it, there's just that different texture. So there's a, there's a little bit that's a, that's going to show, but I'm okay with that right now. And I'm just babbling at this point. All right, so now I need some GL for here. This looks like not quite. Yeah, that'll work. Using bits and pieces and scraps. And I'm gonna take, okay, so I've got, I'm gonna go with like that much of this. And this is going right across here. I'll flip that up. Yep, I won't be able to figure it out. So it's all good. I got more of that selvage here, but hey, it's gonna be the part that I'm cutting off. Alrighty. Let me press this one. We got two more pieces, and then we're going to put these four pieces together, and then we'll be done. And we've been on here for like an hour, not quite an hour, minus our technical difficulties and getting set, set up and all of that. It doesn't take that long to do all of this. Some of the following months are going to be a little bit more detailed. Um, might take a little bit longer, but still, it's it's not a super complicated process. All right. It's not quite wide enough. The 
looking for just the right size scrap. That will do it right there. Love these little bit. I can just kind of shove all my pieces in there. <laughs> yes, they are looking too hard. I'd be like, oh my god, you found it. You're the winner. You make a big deal out of it and make them feel like a fool. <laughs> you win. You found my goof. All right, which way do I want to go? I want to go like that. All right, there we go, right there. And the tickety talk says that it's 10 o'clock. Ding dong, ding dong. I think it does a little bit. Um, maybe not the pin. It, it does dull my the the needle on my machine. I generally change that needle out mo at the beginning of most projects. All right, one more piece. Windsor. Nope, that's not quite big enough. This piece is though. There we go. I am making iris again. Yes, I'm making it at three quarter size. Um, I did do um, a live doing this once before with the intent of downloading it and putting it over on the tube of you. And you know what? Tickety Talk only keeps those lives for 30 days now. About 35 days ago I did that. So I had intentions of making it again anyways. The full size one in the place where I want to put it was too big. This is this is from Legit Kits. It is a block of the month program, Catherine. Um, I am an ambassador for Legit Kits. Um, this is month one. This is what you're going to get. This is what it will be to, when we're done. We're, right now, we're working on this corner right up here, the first corner. Um, if you decide to do this, use that discount code of Boozy Iris and support your local creator. I think it's a wonderful product. Are you a quilter? Now this is three quarters of the size of what the full kit is. I chose to reduce the pattern because a full 60 by 80 quilt is just a little too big for where I want to put it. It would look a little bit better, about three quarters of the size. So I just took my patterns and reduced them. I printed them again at 75%. Yes, there are videos out there of the full size one. Um, this is an awesome thing. Um, full kit 
every month would be about $40, $39.99, free shipping on it. Um, and it is, and you will be amazed at what you end up with. Okay, so these fur the first four pieces are gonna go together like this. So we're gonna go ahead and piece these together. I'm gonna switch back over to my lighter thread because most of these seams coming together are in the light variety. So give me just a second to switch my thread back over. And we talked earlier here today, you just started with hexes and a two and two and a half inch, nice. Yes, and this is a relatively easy foundation paper piecing process. There's no Y seams. There's no curves. Everything is well marked. The pieces are relatively large. These, these that I'm doing here today, these pieces are smaller because I did print it out to be a smaller finished product. Um, but in general, the pieces are pretty decent sized. Uh, fighting with my automatic threader here. Giving up and using my old eyeballs to find the hole. All right. Hand sewing. Eee. Those are evil words. Says the woman who has a hand sewing project right over there. It's not some. It's not my favorite. All right. So we are going to just put these guys together again. The sewing line is that line between here and the gray. Some people are very confident and they will put these together without pinning. Even though I've been doing this for a long time, I still pin because I don't want to be upset when I look at it forever and ever and go, oh, those seams, they don't line up. So that's a me thing. Pin it here on both ends. Put my pin through, make sure it comes out where I want it to on the other side. And then I'll put my pins in this way. Hand sewing hexes keeps me company during slow markets. Okay, okay, definitely. There is definitely a time and place for hand sewing. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not necessarily doing a back stitch, but I'm just kind of like holding it there so it tap, 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 taps in the same spot. It locks it off a little bit. All right, and we're gonna match these guys up. I'm gonna match up these seams here too. Nestle them together here to start with, and then they should be good. Almost. All right. Well, thank you for the follow. Thank you. The cutting after you sew down a new piece seems right for mistakes. You know what? If, if that, when you are new to it, yes, that is where you're going to make mistakes, but you're going to learn from those mistakes and you're going to move on. Um, you'll learn how to make sure you do things in the right order. This one's told by machine piece quilts were not real quilts because I used, oh, poo on them. Poo on them. You know, I did not trim that part of that block down. <laughs> Looking at that going, why does that look weird? Oh, so I didn't finish trimming it. Uh, come on, Wi-Fi, catch up.
told then if great grandma had electricity, she would have a machine and used it. Yep, you're right. When the treadle machines came out, they started using those and they didn't look back after that. Picture came back finally. All right. Now I've got I've got these put together. I'm going to remove I'm going to remove the paper from the seam. Now, one trick that I have learned to get rid of this paper to get have the paper rip out easier. First off, use the right paper. Use um, newsprint. It's going to rip out easier. Next off, take the back side of a seam ripper. And you got to find the right seam. This one works well for me. This one does not work well for me for this. I'm going to just run it along that stitch line. And if you were here, you might be able to hear the paper kind of ripping as I do that. And then this will just pop off. I hear you, buddy. Dog wants to go out. I'm going to have to wait about 10 minutes and we'll be all done. You did want to make one totally hand. Oh, yeah, there you go. I do have one that I made totally by hand. It was a reverse applique. I was laid up after surgery and non weight bearing, and so I was pretty much plastered to the couch for a month. And I had to, had, had to do something. So that's what I did. And then I said, check, that part's done. I don't have to do that one again. I can say I've done that. Now we're gonna turn this here. And now in all honesty, I'm going to get the paper out of these couple pieces here because once I open this up and, and open those up, these are going to be hard to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the paper from a couple of these. Link, I hear ya. I'm going to take the paper out of these guys. Now I'm going to press these open. God, what the heck happened? The paper, the fabric folded over. <laughs> How did that happen? That's a first. New strip piece on foundation paper. Nice. Let's sew this one again and actually include all of the fabric this time. And then I'll press it. All right, 
So now we're going to attach these guys together, matching up that point, that point. Corners, perfect. Um, there's nothing else to match up in the middle, so I'm just going to kind of tack it. And over here. And one more seam and we will be done and then link can go outside so remember if you're interested in making iris go to legitbomb.com Use a discount code of Boozy Iris. You need to do this by Sunday, the 26th of November. If you don't hit that deadline, you will be out of luck. I'm sorry. You'll have to wait until the next block of the month comes around. All right, let's get rid of the paper and the seam allowances here. And then we can go deal with puppy. He's not a puppy. He's an adult dog. He doesn't. He doesn't have accidents or anything, so I'm not super worried. But all right. Now I will probably be back on live later today. I have some stuff that I'm going to be making for my Etsy shop. I need to get quilting the full size iris. All right, here we go. Let me press these open. All right, and there we go. That is it. Watch the yes, you get a portion of the pattern every month. Yes, you will get, for the first month, you're going to get these four blocks right here. You get this much of it. And then month two, you're going to get these four blocks. Month three, you're going to get these, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to realize that you're, you're, you're getting proficient. You're good. Month nine will be eight blocks. And we'll have month, month nine, month 10, month 11, and month 12. Each month is the same price. Yes, it's 40, about $40 a month, $39.99 a month. And that includes shipping. No shipping on that. So, and, the, and if you use the discount code of Boozy Iris, it gets you 10% off that first month. So it'll save you four bucks the first month, okay? So there, that's what you'll get for the first month. Yours will be a little bit bigger because I did, I did shrink the pattern down for this one. Don't know why my computer, my, I've got a TV up here that I'm screening to, screen, uh, streaming to, and it keeps locking up. Um, but yes, we are, uh, that is, that is what we've got here. Are there any other questions or 
anything else I can answer for you. You all can always um, message me and I will answer the best I can. This code and this offer is only good through Sunday the 26th. If you don't take advantage of it by then, you're gonna have to wait for the next block of the month. All right. Okay, let me flip this around. Sorry, you saw my messy studio. All right, so I am going to kick off of here now. Like I said, I'll be back on later. I do have another project I'm going to work on, and I'm going to get my full-size iris onto my long arm and start quilting that. So come back and see that. But for now, I'm going to log off of here, and I will see you back in the studio next time. Have a great day. Go out and enjoy the sunshine out there for a little bit, too. Bye.